Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, Health of the Sick, Pray for us. Saint Joseph, Pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, Pray for us. San Roque. Pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Please stand as we begin our Eucharistic celebration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, every Eucharistic celebration is a celebration of the faithfulness of God. May God's faithfulness be reflected in the fruitfulness of our lives. And so to prepare ourselves to celebrate this Holy Mass, let us first acknowledge our sins 
and humbly ask the Lord for His pardon and strength. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you, mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands, we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second book of Kings. The high priest Hilkiah informed the scribe Shaphan, I have found the book of the law in the temple of the Lord. Hilkiah gave the book to Shaphan, who read it. Then the scribe Shaphan went to the king and reported, Your servants have smelted down the metals available in the temple and have consigned them to the master workmen in the temple of the Lord. The scribe Shaphan also informed the king that the priest Helkiah had given him a book and then read it aloud to the king. When the king heard the contents of the book of the law, he tore his garments and issued this command to Hilkiah the priest. Ahikam, son of Shaphan, Akbor, son of Micaiah, the scribe Shaphan, and the king's servant, Asiah. Go, consult the Lord for me, for the people, for all Judah, about the stipulations of this book that has been found. For the anger of the Lord has been furiously ablaze against us, because our fathers did not obey the stipulations of this book, nor fulfill our written obligations. The king then had all the elders of Judah and of Jerusalem summoned together before him, the king went up to the temple of the Lord with all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, priests, prophets, and all the people, small and great. He had the entire contents of the book of the covenant that had been found in the temple of the Lord read out to them. Standing by the column, the king made a covenant before the Lord that they would follow him and observe his ordinances, statutes, and decrees with their whole hearts and souls, thus reviving the terms of the covenant which were written in this book. And all the people stood as participants in the covenant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord, Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Instruct me, O Lord, in the way of your statutes, that I may exactly observe them. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. 
give me discernment that I may observe your law and keep it with all my heart. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Lead me in the path of your commands, for in it I delight. Teach Incline me the way of heart. your decrees, O Lord. Incline my heart to your decrees and not to gain. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Turn away my eyes from seeing what is vain. By your way, give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Behold, I long for your precepts. In your justice, give me life. Teach me the way of your decrees, O Lord. Please stand. Remain in me as I remain in you, says the Lord. Whoever remains in me will bear much fruit. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but underneath are ravenous wolves. By their fruits, you will know them. Do people pick grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Just so, every good tree bears good fruit, and a rotten tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a rotten tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. So, by their fruits, you will know them. Brothers and sisters, the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, Jesus, in our gospel passage today, was talking about fruits. Jesus is emphasizing to his disciples that he is not just looking for faithfulness, he is looking for fruitfulness. Hindi lamang nais ni Jesus na maging tapat tayo sa Kanya. Ang nais din niya, magbunga ang katapatan mong yan. That is why Jesus in our gospel today tells His disciples, Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down. A tree that does not bear fruit is useless. That is why Jesus reminds his disciples, We are the trees, and we need to bear fruit. What is the fruit of your faithfulness to God? Nagbunga na ba tayo? When we were younger, our family was a member of 
a charismatic community in our parish. And I remember that in our charismatic community, every family is encouraged to bring another family with them regularly. Parang recruitment. And we were very happy always to have a new family with us in the community. And slowly, the community was growing because every family does not just seek that they be present, they were seeking to bring another family with them. That is our work of mission. That is bearing fruit. Have we bear fruit? If you are a minister of the word or a lector in your parish, do not just seek to read in a good manner. Have you spread the word to other people? If you are working in the church, kung ikaw ay nagtatrabaho sa simbahan, ilang tao na ang nadala mo sa simbahan? Baka 50-year awardee ka na sa simbahan, eh wala ka naman nadadala sa simbahan, ikaw lang mag-isa. Nagbunga ka na ba? In our first reading today, from the Book of Kings, we see the high priest Hilkiah and the king discovering the book of the covenant in the temple. But they did not just keep the book to themselves. They called all the people of Israel to join them in reading the book and being partners of the covenant. My dear brothers and sisters, we are not just called to keep the faith. We are called to spread and proclaim the faith. We are not just called to mere faithfulness. We are called to fruitfulness. Mga minamahal na kapatid, sa pagdiriwang natin ng banal na misa sa umagang ito, magandang tanungin natin ang ating mga sarili. Hindi lamang ang tanong na, ako ba'y naging tapat sa Diyos? Tanungin din natin, nagbunga na ba ang aking katapatan sa Diyos? Naipahayag ko ba ang kanyang salita sa iba? Mayroon ba akong nahilang mga tao? Mayroon ba akong nakuhang mga tao pabalik sa Kanya? Hindi lamang katapatan, kundi pagbibigay bunga sa Panginoon. May our faithfulness, faithfulness always bear fruit. Amen. Please stand. Jesus' death and resurrection has borne for us life-giving fruits. Through our prayers, may we as modern prophets give good fruits for the church and the world. For every petition, let us say, Lord, fill us with your goodness. Lord, fill us with your goodness that the church may lead the Christian faithful to the road that leads to the values of love, justice, and truth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill, fill us, us with, with your goodness. goodness. That our poor people may not be exploited or misled by false and ambitious leaders. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill, fill us with, with your, your goodness, goodness, that people who are victims of injustice may be healed and learn again to develop trust and friendship. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, fill us with your goodness, that the sick and the dying may draw strength from Jesus, who came to the aid of the sick and the helpless. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness, that the dead may finally receive the rewards of their labors. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, fill us with your goodness. Heavenly Father, you are our strength in time of need. Open our hearts to your grace and lead us into your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His Holy Church. Receive, O Lord, the sacrifice of conciliation and praise and grant that cleansed by its action, we may make offering of a heart pleasing to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For although you have no need of our praise, yet our thanksgiving is itself your gift, since our praises add nothing to your greatness, but profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. And so, in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy, we proclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord God, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread. 
and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Please stand. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through Him and with Him and in Him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. 
Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Brothers and sisters, the body of Christ. Amen. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the Most Holy Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
please stand. Let us pray. Renewed and nourished by the sacred body and precious blood of your Son, we ask of your mercy, O Lord, that what we celebrate with constant devotion may be our sure pledge of redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our healing rosary for the world this evening at 9 p.m. will be the community of St. Peter's Parish, the Shrine of Leaders in Commonwealth, Quezon City. We thank their community for hosting this evening's healing rosary and we ask everyone to join us together online at 9 p.m. so that we could pray the rosary for the healing of the world. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. <laughs>